First off, I want to thank the uh, brave men and women who work behind the wall. I want to thank them on a national level because their job goes on How do they try to turn a guard? Well, President, uh, Correctional Officer, sorry, I apologize. Uh, but Correctional Officer. How are you guys uh, doing today? It's Anthony Ganji, host of Tear Talk. Today I want to talk about a tool that if used properly, it will protect you. But if you don't use it the correct way and you lie, it's going to destroy you. And the tool I'm talking about is the logbook. A lot of us don't realize how important that logbook is. So what I thought I could do today is give you some tips and make sure at all times that we protect that logbook and we document what should be documented as specifically as possible. All right, guys, so if you have it, the show Tear Talks to you, you brave men and women that work that front line. So please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. That bell is going to notify you every time I post a video. And when we come back from our sponsor, we're going to be talking about the prison logbook. I wanted to attend a university that had an intelligence program. I wanted to look at problems different. I wanted to increase my critical thinking abilities. AMU offered those avenues to expand. Obtaining your degree as an adult, you're actually paying yourself and investing in yourself. You can't put a dollar on it, it's priceless. It's something that can never be taken away from you. American Military University. Learn from the leader. Thank you guys for listening to my sponsor. I don't think people realize how important a prison logbook is. I really don't. Jail logbook, prison logbook, wherever you guys work. I think people don't realize how a prison logbook can be used against you or to protect you. And I say it's a tool because technically it is a tool. If you're doing the right thing, hence the prison logbook will be great. Because it's going to showcase the good that you're doing and will be utilized to protect you. But if you're doing the wrong thing, mm, not good. Because that prison logbook will then be used against you. Because remember, what you're putting in there, in that prison logbook, should be specifics. Date, times, people involved, the incident, so forth and so on. That prison logbook is what's going to be utilized to compare and contrast, to reference things that we have going on in the camera, whatever it is. The prison law book is the foundation to match information. And you're the one that's putting the information in. This is where your credibility gets tested. I have seen people get in trouble, not for doing the wrong thing, but for neglecting to do the right thing. Someone once told me that, Corrupt officers do what they do because good officers let them do it. And that's kind of what I'm mentioning here. Let's say you have an officer or a supervisor that's not supposed to be in your area and they come into your area and they tell you, hey, don't put me in the logbook. And you don't put them in the logbook. Who's going to be held responsible? Let's say later on down the line, they can't prove what this officer's doing, but they know he's doing something, but they can't prove it. There is something they can prove. They can prove that he was in the unit and you failed to document it. So most of the time when you see people go down, it's their failure to do the right thing. It's their failure to document the specifics. Don't get lazy with that logbook. Don't leave that logbook out in the open for anybody to put their hands on it. You know, you're an officer, you're doing a tour and you're checking out this side of the facility and you leave the logbook right out in the podium, out in the open where anybody could get their hands on it. You're not watching the logbook. And now anybody could take a page from the logbook, add something into it, take the book. You're responsible for that book no different than you're responsible for the keys that run that unit. If those keys go missing, you're in a lot of deep shit. If that logbook goes missing... You're in deep shit. If a page of that logbook goes missing, you may be in deep shit. That logbook has to be protected. It has to be secured. When you're on that unit and you sign over for your tools and equipment, that logbook is something that you're signing for. You're signing over responsibility of that logbook from one party to you, whoever you relieved. Which means that anything goes in that logbook or anything happens to that logbook, you're going to be held responsible for. That's why for me, when I had a logbook, I wrote everything in. If you were a supervisor coming into my unit, don't worry about it. You don't have to write yourself in. I'm going to write you in. Anything that goes into that logbook will be in my handwriting. It will be me that wrote it in. Also, I was all about specifics. 
Give an example. Let's say an inmate comes up to you and they have a medical concern. So you do the next thing, you call your supervisor, and maybe in the meantime, you're also calling medical, and for some reason, medical doesn't want to see the inmate. Some people will be happy to say, okay, you don't want to see the inmate, that's fine, they'll write in the logbook, medical refused to see the inmate. Does anybody see what's wrong with that? You need to be specific. And that's funny, because when you're specific, people change their story. It's not medical refused to see the inmate. What you're gonna say, excuse me, ma'am or sir, what's your name again? Because I want to document you in the logbook. Nurse such and such or doctor such and such? Let me know. And all of a sudden when you go to put their name specifically in that logbook, oh, we'll see them now. I'm sorry, we made a mistake. You can send them to our office now. But the thing is, you need to document specifics. Who was the nurse that told you? Because if you're sloppy with that logbook, your credibility lessens. You gotta realize something, guys. When they do an investigation, the first thing that gets pulled is that logbook. That logbook, as mentioned before, is the reference, is to compare and contrast. How you keep that logbook is a reflection of how you are. If you keep that logbook sloppy, then you're seen as sloppy. You know what's funny? Sometimes when we have a movement, let's just say, and it's a kitchen movement, some people will put in their logbook, kitchen movement out. Some people may even put kitchen moving out, let's say 19 inmates. But the right way to do it is kitchen movement called out, 19 inmates, and list the inmates. Be specific. When someone asks you what inmates will let out, well, let's take a look at the logbook. There it is. These were the 19 inmates that were let out of my unit that day. They signed out with me. And these were the 19 inmates that went from point A to point B. The key is, is that you're being specific with that information that you're now forwarding to wherever it's got to go. Because at any time, that logbook could be pulled for legal reasons. So you want to make sure that you keep a nice, tight-looking logbook. And I'm going to tell you something. As I mentioned before, just the opposite. If you keep a tight, nice-looking logbook, you're going to be seen as more credible. Because your information is there. It's in that logbook. Also, have you guys ever had supervisors that kind of get lazy and don't do their tours? And then what they tend to do is may call the officer and say, do me a favor, put me in the book. And then you put them in the book. Well, if that's the case, maybe you should put them in the book that's saying, Sergeant such and such or Lieutenant such and such called me and did a phone check. And that's fine if that's what he wants to do. But eventually he's going to have to get into touring or she's going to have to start touring. But in the meantime, you can't put down that they toured because they weren't in your unit. They called you. So now when the supervisor called you, say, hey, mind putting me in the book? Say, yeah, but you, you didn't tour. So I'm just going to put that you called and checked in. But I'm not going to put that you toured because at the end of the day, when someone starts reviewing that camera, they're going to see that you didn't tour my unit. So now I'm writing you in as if you toured. I'm going to be held liable for that. And the thing is, that sergeant's going to get in trouble for not touring because they're going to see on camera that sergeant did not tour. But they're also going to hold you responsible because you put them in as if they were touring. You're going to be held responsible for that. Also, when you tour, document, right? We all know that, right? Document every tour that you do, but make sure you're touring before you document. Because I know a lot of people that don't tour. And they just document that they did a tour. And now when the cameras start, you know, they pull those cameras and they start seeing that it says in the book that you toured at this time, but we looked at the camera and for the last hour you haven't moved. Well, we have a problem because the information that you're putting in the logbook does not match what we see on the cameras. Again, you're going to be held responsible for that. The key is, guys, most of the time the problem happens with the falsification of documentation. And that's exactly what's happening. You're saying that you're doing a tour, but you haven't toured. You're saying the sergeant was in the unit, but he wasn't in the unit. You said you spoke to medical, but who'd you speak to? You said you let 19 inmates out. Well, who are the 19? You know, these are questions that need to be answered when you document. And I know that a lot of people sometimes take notes and at the end of the day, they put everything in the logbook, 
I'm not a big fan of that because sometimes you can forget. And sometimes you don't put everything in. Then you wind up getting a sloppy logbook with late entries or just omitted information. I'm saying as soon as you get a chance, log that stuff in. You know, log it in right away as soon as you get a chance. And make sure at all times you secure that log book when you're not utilizing it. You are responsible for that information, which means that only you should be able to have your hands on that logbook. Sign people in, sign people out, sign all events that are relevant. Don't miss a beat. Be specific. This is a legal document. How you keep that logbook is how you are seen as a professional. Don't drop the ball on this. Do not drop the ball on how important a logbook is. And again, I say it's a tool. It's a tool because it will protect you if you follow this advice. But if you fail to do this, if you fail to keep proper records, if you falsify, the same logbook that will be utilized to protect you will now be utilized against you. As always, guys, the show is Tear Talk. If you haven't, please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. That bell will notify you every time I post a video. Stay safe.